in search of soil. Do you think adding microbes to the soil makes sense? My initial answer is yes. And I have to admit, I have a conflict of interest. I work for a company that sells microbial soil inoculants, right? And so what we see is, is when, you, when you add select species to a natural environment, you generally will see a response in terms of greater productivity. It's not just us, it's other people as well. But you don't see it consistently. That's one of the things about microbial soil inoculants. They're generally considered inconsistent at best in snake oil at worst, right? Uh, but they do work. Um, and so the question becomes, well, well, why is that? Why couldn't you just develop a natural population to do that same thing? And again, to go back to Midwestern BioAg and Gary Zimmer, you know, they will feed humic acid and they'll use no-till and they'll do a lot of things. And over time, their, their hypothesis was, well, we can, and, and, and also composting, that, that we can build that up more naturally than, than applying a, a direct fed microbial, if you will, a microbial soil amendment. Now, the fault in that logic is what is manure or what is, you know, running, running sheep or cattle over a field, you know, well, you're adding microbes. Uh, that's what manure is. It's, it's a prebiotic and a probiotic. You know, think of the microbes we're adding as probiotics, agricultural probiotics. And oftentimes you need to have a, what we call a microbial food supplement, kelp extract, uh, humic acid, molasses. You know, in India, we use mill mud, you know, all the residue of, of crushing the, uh, crushing the sugar cane and putting back everything but the sugar back on the field. Um, so that's kind of akin to, to, to feeding the soil with particular microbes. And, and we can talk about why I, why I think that's useful. Um, well, let's but, do that. Why do you think that's useful? Yeah, okay. So, and Gary Harmon, uh, who's a professor, a retired professor at Cornell, wrote, wrote a really nice paper on, on trichoderma, a review paper. Uh, and he talks about trichoderma in particular and other you know, soil fungi and microbes. And, and, and talks about the fact that there are certain microbes that really do seem to, even if they're naturally present, like many trichoderma species are naturally present in the soil. But sometimes population density makes a real difference. It's like a probiotic. You know, people would argue, I'm going to answer your question here in a minute. I realize I'm circling around it. No, that's okay. But you know, if you're not taking a probiotic, you should be. But some people would say, well, if you drink kombucha and eat you know, raw sauerkraut and, and, and uh, kimchi and things along those lines, you'll be just fine. Yet there's a body of scientific evidence that say, look, there are certain probiotics that are better than just trying to get it all from your, from your environment. Well, the same thing with, with uh, agricultural probiotics. And there's a thing called quorum sensing. Uh, do, you, do you know what quorum sensing is? Or maybe some of your listeners would not know what it yeah, is. Ex explain that. Yeah, okay, so quorum sensing, the, the, the best analogy I can, I can make is like you're sitting at a party and, and, you know, it's midnight and it's really not very exciting and you're about ready to, to signal to your friends, hey, let's, let's go home or go somewhere else. Well, all of a sudden, somebody shows up with live music and alcohol uh, and, and, boy, things really start, start to click. Well, that's quorum sensing. And it, it, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, I think, a, a relatively well-accepted scientific principle that microbes practice quorum sensing, that there are certain microbes that will stimulate activity in others. In other words, it is kind of interesting that, you know, you've, you've got a billion cells per gram of soil already in most soils. So you got people like us, you know, taking rhizolizer and putting it into the field, which, which isn't nearly that, that density, and you're magically getting these responses, and you do get them. Uh, we see, you know, increases of 20% to 80% in, in certain crops with the addition of our trichoderma plus bacillus combination. And so you kind of think, well, well, how are they competing? Well, they may not be competing with those other microbes. They may actually be turning them on. And a, a good kind of, kind of anecdote I have for that, I worked for Diversa Corporation here in San Diego for a long time. Um, Diversa uh, was instrumental in the development of the field of, of environmental sequencing, which is now known as metagenomics. Environmental sequencing means you just go in there and you just sequence everything. You know, 99% of the microbes in the world aren't culturable. 
you know, we can find them through metagenomics, but we can't actually make them grow. Uh, and so we did a lot of environmental sequencing, and you could eventually, through annotation, determine, okay, there's all these different species there. But we're always frustrated by the fact, and this is the, the mid-2000s, that, okay, we, we didn't know what the culture looked like or we couldn't culture them. So uh, Eric Mather uh, and, and his team got together, and they were able to encapsulate one or two cells in a gel bead that was permeable. Then they would extract the cells from the ocean, a peat bog, soil, whatever it happened to be, pack a column with those gel beads, and then run a solution of soil extract or ocean water, whatever it happened to be, through that. And lo and behold, things just started to grow like crazy. Uh, and, and, and the message to me was that they were all communicating. In other words, when you try to use Cook's principles, right, which is a single organism, you know, on a plate and, 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 and get it to grow independently, well, these are social creatures. They won't grow oftentimes independently. They need each other and, and they need certain signals. So quorum sensing to me, and the, the, the reason I think cert, you know, uh, 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 soil amendments, microbial soil amendments work as long as they're alive you know, and fresh and are put out at high enough density and they're put out with things that they can feed on, these microbial food supplements, we should, we should talk about that, that they may be acting as quorum sensing. In other words, they're completing that picture. And the kind of the other analogy of that that I use is like you buy a, buy a Ford F-150 all tricked out uh, and, and it's got gas in the tank, but you forgot to put a steering wheel in it. Well, you're not going anywhere. Or you go, I played French horn in, in, in uh, uh, high school in the symphony orchestra. And if you went to a full orchestra with everybody there, it's just a wonderful experience. But if you leave out, especially if you leave out the French horns, uh, but also the violins, it's just not going to be the same thing. Nobody's going to perform as well. And so I think what happens with those organisms that we have found work well as microbial soil amendments are acting to improve everybody around them. They're acting to a certain extent as quorum sensors that will actually cause, uh, cause that whole ecosystem now to bloom a little bit you know, more pro, you know, uh, prolifically uh, and get everybody involved in creating the functionality you want to create the optimal environment for that crop to grow. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out some of the great clips and watch the full interviews right here on In Search of Soil.